welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. Sing it with me if you know it. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that I have got the fan on. And it's been on for the whole tutorial. So I'm really sorry about that. But if I didn't have the fan on, I would be melting the makeup off as quickly as I was putting it on. Also, yes, I am wearing a hat. On account of how my hair, very bad hair day. Humidity is stupidly high, so my hair went frizzy at the ends and flat on top like a reverse mullet. So when one's hair is looking bad, one either stays in or dons a suitably fabulous piece of headgear. Choices for my personal uh, collection. I've got about eight or nine Stetsons and about three or four Trilbies and a floppy sun hat. But the floppy sun hat, uh, you wouldn't be able to see what's going on on my eyes. Talking about what's going on on my eyes, as if the title, thumbnail and description haven't already told you. It is uh, the Safari Rain palette from Coloured Rain. So, if you want to find out exactly which shadows I used, how well they performed, and whether or not I say yee at any point during this film, and then my friend, you're in exactly the right place. Grab yourself a drink, grab yourself a snack, put your feet up, get comfy, stick your fan on if it's hot, and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. For the first time this year, I've had to put the fan on right at the start of the film. It is blisteringly hot and with my kitchen being south facing it's it yeah it's right you will have seen in the intro uh, the palette that I'm using today and it is my birthday present, well, one of my birthday presents from my hubby, and it's the Coloured Rain Safari palette, which looks like this, as if you haven't all already seen it anyway. I'm trying to show you it so you can see the colours without the background reflecting. Um, I have used this quite a few times off camera, so I have a very well rounded review to give you. Well, technically everything I do is very well rounded, isn't it? Right, um, while I zoom in, just to remind you, uh, my film is aimed, and my, my channel is aimed at all skill levels, from complete beginners to experts. Not that I'm claiming to be an expert, but if, because of my chronic pain, I'm going too slowly for you, or because I'm talking through each step so that beginners can follow me, just speed me up. There's a speed widget either there or there. Just, you know, just just do that instead of moaning that I'm going too slow, please, okay? Thank you. Right, my face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed, including my antiperspirant primer, details of which are linked in my description box. And all that I've got on my lids so far is a MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, which I've not set, but it's been on there about 10 minutes now while I've been setting the camera up and everything, so it's dried nicely. So, this is clean, it's just stained from a previous use. This is the Boozy Shop Tapered Blending Brush. And I'm going to go in to start with, with Congo Basin, which is a very beautiful khaki green. Fair amount of kick up in the pan, but at least you know you're getting pigment on the brush. It doesn't ever worry me because whatever pigment is laying on top of the colour, I go back in and pick up for the next bit that I'm going to do. Now, 
when I look straight ahead you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner so I don't have a hooded eye. If your static lid completely covers and I mean like completely down to the lash line all or part of your lid you have either a full or a half hooded eye or what's known as a mono or an Asian eyelid. You can still follow my tutorials. A lot of people with deep set eyes think they have hooded eyes because I've got deep set eyes and I get a lot of the same problems as in when I cut my crease I can't just follow the shape of my uh, eyeball, have to cut it right up onto the static lid, I get transference of shimmers onto the upper lid and even when I use glitter glues glitter will not stay in the crease. So. To show you the, what I mean about deep set eyes, this is the eye that I'm blind in so I can close this one. If I use this to cover the mobile lid and then close it, you can see I've got as much lid again that folds back in. See? And if I were to cover the upper lid and close my eye, you can see I've got about the same amount of space, about, well, about half the amount of space again there. So I do understand the issues and a lot of people with deep set eyes think they have hooded lids because they see the transference onto the upper lid and just assume that means they have hooded lids. But if you can see your mobile lid, even if you only see part of it, then you haven't got a full hooded lid, okay? You can still follow my tutorials. All of my tutorials are hooded lid friendly. All you need to do with a brush like this or a pencil brush, just sketch out with your eye open where you would need your crease to be. So. For example, imagine you can't see any of my mobile lid. I would then draw a line, sort of two or three mils above it, and that would be my new crease line. Okay, let's begin. Right, so because I've not actually set this base, I'm going to start off by tapping the colour onto the lid. Now, the reason I've not set it is because I quite like the fact that not setting your base gives you a stronger colour. Um, if, I mean some, there are still some shadows that do work better when you, sh when you, when you shed your lid, when you set your lid. Um, but if that is the case, I will let you know what they are. So I'm literally just popping back in, picking up the loose kick up on top of the pan and tapping this in where I want it to be. Now I always struggle here and here on both eyes because of creasing um, to get shadow to actually stay put. Um, right, so I've at the moment just tapped that on. So now without adding any colour to the brush, I'm now going to start doing circular movements in one direction and then coming back again in the opposite direction. What this does is it gently moves the skin on your eyelids around so that if you do have looser eyelids, because let's face it, I'm 45, I've lost about 10 stone, my eyelids move, okay? By doing circular movements, you're moving it around in a very gentle way because I hold my brush right at the end here you're moving it around in a very gentle way so that you're not over stretching the skin because this eye got pulled around a lot when I was five six years old at the ophthalmic and you can see I've got super super deep creasing there that this circular blending doesn't work on so I do have to actually stretch that lid out but for most people, you will find that this circular movement will do the job that you want. Now, with some shadows, as you can see with this one, when you start to blend them, they look as if they're going a bit patchy. So all you need to do is pick up a little bit more pigment on your brush and blend with pigment on the brush. Okay? If you still find you've got a stubborn area that won't take pigment, then blend everywhere else out until you get it how you want it. And then pick up the pigment, just on the tip of the bristles, and very gently just tap 
and keep moving the brush in circular movements but you're taking it up off of the skin all each time and tap to build the colour up that way instead okay and now I'm going to do exactly the same thing over on this side you can see once this goes on your lid it's a very mustardy khaki a lot of khaki greens really are heavily heavily green based but you can see this one is absolutely to me once it gets onto your eye it looks more of a mustard than a khaki which is great because that means it will work really well with the browns and the oranges in here as well as well as just the greens so I think that's a really really clever bit of thinking by coloured rain on that score so I'm just now doing my little circular movements backwards and forwards to get it all blended I do keep sitting back and checking that both look the same because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical unless you're James Charles and you photoshop it of course honestly I can assure you I don't use any filters on mine the only time I use a filter is if it's a bloody obvious snapchat filter so what you see in terms of looks that I upload to my Instagram and my Twitter are achievable looks I don't face tune, I don't um, photoshop, I, the only thing I might do is if it's a particularly overcast day I might just brighten the picture up but I don't at all play with colour saturation I literally just turn the brightness up which if anything will highlight more problems than disguise them You can see up here this one's gone super super patchy right up on this top corner so sometimes I just have to kind of take some of the excess off with my finger and then go back in with the brush. It is simply because I've got really quite deep creasing starting here but I'm not overly worried because I'm going to be popping a darker colour on in a minute anyway. So. As long as it looks okay when I'm relaxing, because I don't walk around like that. Oh. Permanent state of surprise. So yeah, this is actually a really, really nice green. It's one of the few, as I, I think it's the only khaki green I've got, which does pull more mustard than green. Which is great, because it means it will work with greens, yellows, browns, oranges. Um, so it's actually a very, very clever decision for Coloured Rain to do it with that pigment. Right, I've cleaned this brush off on a um, microfiber cloth so you can see there's no more pigment coming off of it onto my hand. And I'm going to go into Jungle, which is the green, the deep green in here. Like so, as you can see. Now, because obviously this colour has now set the base I can now start off with a windscreen wiper movement put the first bit of this colour down so I'm just going to go side to side like a windscreen wiper through the crease there between my eyeball and my eye socket this is the point where if you've moved your crease up you would follow the line that you've made now pick up a little bit more pigment. I'm going to do the circular movements again, but this time I'm going to keep the brush in contact with this green line all the time so it doesn't go up the eye. Alright, so I'm just going to little circular movements all the way along, first in one direction and then back in the other direction, but still keeping in keeping the brush in contact with that first green line that we put down. Pick up a wee bit more pigment just for the outside bit here where I have the issue with um, creasing and again just remember to keep dropping your brows and seeing how it looks 
and just blend until you are happy with the result. Now if you want an editorial look you could just leave it here. If you want um, a more blended look you can grab a clean brush and just gently buff where the two colours meet. to blend the two together more. All right. So that is an option for you. Remember, add colour slowly. It's much easier to add in than it is to try and take it off if you go in too heavy. All right, so I'm just, just making sure I've got the depth of colour that I want on this outside edge here. So I'm going to have to resort to the tap, tap, tap trick that I discussed earlier. And you can see that pops the pigment in and it does blend it, but it doesn't whisk away any of the depth of colour. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the other eye, which I'll be able to show you a little bit clearer because obviously I can close this eye when I'm doing it. I do still keep my eye open though when I'm doing the windscreen wiper because I like the fact that I can just run it through I'll just put green on the end of my nose, it's clever um, to run it through the gap between my eyeball and obviously the socket of my skull. Alright, and then just circular movements all the way along, keeping in touch with that line and coming all the way back again but we've reversed the direction of the brush so going towards the nose you go that way coming away from the nose you go that way and by doing that you will normally manage to get every bit of skin so that you don't end up with barcoding or tiger striping like that However, as I said, with this eye, I do have to gently stretch it out because of that super, super deep creasing. Otherwise, what happens is I end up with pigment that sort of settles in the creases. And then through the day, as I move my eye and sort of blink, I get like little showers of pigment come down, which is great if you want to slowly increase the number of multicoloured freckles you've got through the day. Uh, less so if you don't want to do that. Again, I'm just sitting back and just checking that both eyes match. I'm very conscious of the fact that when I sit back like that, you may not be able to hear me as well because of the fan. But if I didn't have the fan on, I'd be a melting pile of bummer. Um, and the makeup will be coming off as quickly as I am putting it on, so yes. Right, I like that. I'm going to clean that brush off. And I'm going to go in uh, with a more tailored brush, a much thinner brush this time. I'm going to use, she said trying to find it because I know it's here somewhere, oh there we go, this is the Morphe M562, it's absolutely brilliant especially if you have got hooded lids or deep set eyes and you really need to control the area that you're adding colour to. So I'm going to go into the deep brown which is Matriarch. And I'm going to just gently wiggle that through in the windscreen wiper again, all the way across. But what we're going to do this time, and obviously I'll be able to demonstrate this better with my other eye because I can close it. With this one I'll just tilt my head back. We're going to do circular movements, but we're going to keep it right on 
that line so that we're only softening the very very edges of the line and we're not taking it up the eye at all because I still want to see the three lots of different colours okay so again tiny circular movements twirling towards the nose as you go in a couple of verticals and then twirl away from the nose as you come out just softening the edges of that line okay and if you now look this eye now looks as if it goes much further back in so that's a, that is the reason that I always put a very very deep colour through there is because if you have had to move your crease up by putting a dark deep colour the deepest colour that you're going to use in a very thin line here anything dark recedes anything light comes forward so by doing that you're giving the impression of the eye falling back more so if you have had to create a false crease up here it won't look flat it'll still look as if you've got the eye disappearing back in. Pick up a little bit more pigment and I'm just going to pop this on the outer third of my mobile lid going pretty much just to the edge of my iris when I look forward. See? And just gently buff that backwards and forwards and then a little flick up because at the moment I'm really struggling, um, my fibro makes my eyes very watery anyway and with hay fever at the moment um, my eyes just, I, I just can't put eyeliner on because it doesn't stay but by doing this sort of gentle upward flick here just at the edge it gives that same illusion of pulling the eye out and up so it gives you the same effect of a cat's eye without having to have liner on if you too are suffering with the dreaded pollen or fibro or weepy eyes. But so same thing this side again I start off with the eye open and gently waggle it through. Windscreen wipering backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards up a wee bit of that kick up on the top of the pan and circular movements all the way along towards the nose as you come in a couple of verticals at the end and away from the nose as you come back out again and I like to go in a couple of times just to make sure that the edges are as softly blended as possible. I'll just check my tiger striping. Not too bad this time. And again, colouring the outer third of your mobile lid with the same matriarch colour. And just flick up so you're kind of you're not putting a lot of color on you're just taking what's left on the brush here and taking it just up to roughly the edge of the, the darker of the two greens so it's not a huge deep stripe going up but it's just enough to give that illusion of the eyes coming out and up Okay, time to clean this brush. I have got a colour switch that I tap off into just to keep things tidy, um, but I've actually found that using a microfiber cloth or a flannel or an old towel is actually kinder to your brushes, especially if you have real hair ones, than um, using the colour switch. I think I'll go in with 
I'm trying to find one of my nice flatter brushes. I washed a load of them earlier this today, so a lot of them are over there. But this is the uh, it's actually the spot concealer from the Royal and Lang Nickel Chic Pro range. Hi, baby. Hello. That's the husband coming Just in the back door. Me to get some uh, naily nails. Some naily nails, yeah, huh? Some slightly longer ones, I think. As like opposed to what? The hammery as opposed, nails? As opposed to clout nails, which I don't I need to reattach uh, one of the edges. Okay, that makes sense. I've been, I've taken all the old nails out of it. Okay. Oh. Well, right. We do have some longer clouts, which might do the job actually. Well, it's entirely up to you, it's your shed. Yeah. I'm glad I did do it actually because right along the top ridge there was a massive split in the felt. Ooh, not good. Not good, so literally it must have just happened during the heat. Mm. It didn't leak last time I was there, so good thing right. I did. Right, so there are four shimmers in this palette. We've got Amazon Basin, which is this sort of pewtery, gold and greeny colour. Got Lioness, which is this gorgeous yellow gold. Toucan, which is this beautiful orangey copper. And Tigress, which is a pure orange. Now, if I actually wipe those on the back of my hand, you can see from that, I hope, they are all super, super reflective. But I think with this eye look, I am probably going to go with this one, which is Lioness. Now this is the softest of all of the shimmers. So be super, super careful when you're putting your brush in, otherwise you will dig a big hole in it. Now I'm just going to get myself a little mirror here so I can concentrate on what I'm doing because viewfinder is quite a long way away. Now you can't, this is, if this is of course going on dry, you can wet the brush if you want and that will help with um, preventing some of the fallout but obviously will then change the sort of the brightness of this, it will make it more reflective almost. Um, giving you a similar effect to if you had foiled um, the, the shadow, which just wetting the brush is not foiling the shadow. I will be doing um, a, sh a short film on that soon, explaining the proper difference between foiling and just applying a shadow wet. But you can see how beautifully that has gone on. Now with the other eye, because I have to stretch it out, I'm going to have to lean in. Because if I don't do this, I will end up with all of the shimmer settling into the crease. And every time I blink, getting showers of it coming down my face which is not exactly the look I'm going for but you can see the opacity of this it's it's completely covering that beautiful dark chocolate matriarch brown that we put on even without being wet going on as a dry shadow I've got to be honest, this particular shade I prefer applying dry rather than wet. I prefer the finish when it's dry. You could of course apply it with your finger if you wanted to, but I'm not poking my eyes out, thanks. There, pretty. Right, I am going to pause you, uh, clear up some of this fallout put some foundation on etc and I'll be back to finish off the under eyes on this look so I'll see you right now and I'm back again okie dokie 
I am going to go in with this nice flat brush that I showed you earlier and I'm going to take Matriarch which is that dark brown and just put it on the tips of the bristles okay? and then bring those right tight up underneath my lower lashes and again just once I've done it gentle flick of the what's left on the brush up the side there just to reinforce that sort of fake cat eye that we're doing oh. you know one of these days I will do this eye without flinching but obviously where I don't have any peripheral vision I am very much relying on muscle memory and a viewfinder to not poke myself in the eye and uh, regular viewers will no doubt know not always successful at that. Clean that brush off. And then this is actually the brush that came in the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette. But I really like it because it's flat topped but it's chunkier. So it's great for sort of blowing out the bottom line. Um, and I'm going to go into clay, which is the only other matte in the palette that I've not used yet. And it's this sort of orangey, orangey brown. And I'm just going to use that to gently buff out that lower lash line. And again, I'm just taking it up ever so slightly to the edge of the matriarch on the upper lash you don't have to do this on your lower lash line if you don't want to or you could use either one of the greens that we used earlier if that would if that's more your style um, but I just wanted to show you that all of the mats are form equally as well basically. As I said I have used this quite a few times off camera. I'm going to start doing that rather than giving you sort of first impressions. Um, for example the foundation that I'm wearing it's about the second time I've tried it. Um, just so that I can give you a more rounded review. My back hurts today. Right, uh, highlight. I think I'll go in with Jeffrey's sarcophagus. This is just a really old lip brush that I bought off of eBay years ago. But it is great for just popping a bit up under your brow and doing round your um, tear duct. The reason I always do my brow, you can always use um, a shade, sort of a couple of shades lighter than your skin tone in a matte colour if you don't want to put a shimmer up under your brows. But it, it just gives the illusion of, because your brows do tend to sink a bit as you get older, so it gives the illusion that you still have very high brows um, and gives like a more youthful you know, look to the face. It's a, way of, it's a way of cheating being younger basically. And you can just do your inner corner like that but I've actually found with my shape eyes it's actually quite flattering to bring it along under the tear duct and just blend it in to the colour that I've taken underneath the eye. So that's what I'm going to do both sides. And then what I should do is I'll pause you briefly and I'll put mascara on and I'll stick highlight everywhere else and I'll put some lippy on and do my setting spray and do something with this hair which 
is a mess, let's be honest. Um, and I'll be back with my final thoughts. For you though, that's going to happen like that. Yeehaw! You know it's a bad hair day if I put a hat on. Okay. But, this is the finished look. See what I mean about me getting... Look, let me zoom in and I'll show you what I mean. Shimmer's transferring up. See? And then when my eyes are open, you don't see it. Who did I, folks? I feel ya. So, Stetson aside, struggling hair-wise today, as you can see, it really doesn't want to do. It's not being helpful to me today, folks. Put it that way. Actually, the fan's not helping blowing it all over the show, but as I said before, no fan, no makeup. But that is my finished look with the Coloured Rain Safari Rain palette. Uh, the mascara is the Catrice Glamondol Volume Waterproof, which is the dupe for Bad Girl Bang. Cheaper and it's waterproof and you get the same look. Setting spray, I decided to go for the Milani Make It Dewy today. And the lippy, hubby, bless his heart, look at this packaging, look. Hubby got me one of the matching lippies. There were three options. There was this one, which is for me what my everyday nude is, which is basically a, a mauve. Kind of my looks, my lips look better. There was a red and there was a deep brown. Now, he knows if I'm wearing a bright or a deep colour, I will wear a liquid lipstick so that it doesn't smudge and it doesn't bleed. So he chose well, bless him. And um, Jeffrey, of course, is shining. But my thoughts on this palette. Um, all of the mattes are super pigmented and blend beautifully. There are only the four though. You've got the orangey brown here, the deep brown there, this khaki green which as you saw comes up quite mustardy and then the deeper green here. So you do only have four mattes however you can create a good number of looks just using those mattes um, which quite surprised me. Um, I showed you I missed out one of the shimmers. I missed out Green Valley. But as you can see, that's more of a satin than a shimmer. And it was too close in colour to um, the khaki that I put on to want to use it with this particular look. But you do have a really good choice. You've got that satin green in the middle, which to be honest, if you use a fluffy brush, you're going to get quite a bit of fallout, but you can actually use that through your crease and blending it up the eye. Um, and you blend most of the satin away and just get the, the, the matte colour left behind. You've got the gorgeous bright yellow gold that I've got on now. You've got this putri one which goes beautifully with browns and oranges and greens. Uh, the beautiful bright, bright orange, which is mwah, I will do a look with that, I promise you. Um, and the sort of coppery gold. So you've got an awful, it's a very, very clever palette. I know a lot of people might think this is a companion palette, but it's not. You can create a good number of looks using this. And I have created a good number of looks using this. Um, the mirror in it is good size, very, very clear, absolutely fantastic. Um, if you're the kind of person that worries about mirrors. I do tend to keep the cardboard packaging for them, mainly because um, I like them to continue to, to look as new as possible, even when I've used them and had them for years. Uh, it's just something that I'm funny about like that. Yes, I know, my hat's tilted right back because I, I don't want to 
cast a shadow over my face and I want you to be able to see the eye look. Um, the lipstick is actually really very, very comfortable. Um, they describe it as a, this is Meishi Rain, spelt R-A-I-N-E, as in the name of the company. Um, and it is a matte lipstick, but it's not the kind of matte lipstick that you, you sort of feel it sloughing off the top layer of your skin as, you, as you're applying it. Um, and it doesn't suck all the life out of your lips when you're wearing it either. It's really, really comfortable, very, very lightweight. Um, I've very often forgotten that I'm wearing it. Uh, it's, it's that light uh, and that comfortable. So, do I recommend the Safari Rain palette? And, well, this particular one is Meishi Rain lipstick. Yeah, do you know what? I really do. Um, I think you get fantastic looks out of them. And they last, they don't fade. So, you know, you keep this, if you're going out all day, you could do this in the morning and still be looking good when you come, well, depending on what sort of state you're in when you come home, but your, your makeup will still be looking this strong and this colourful. You don't end up with it losing colour through the day. Um, all I will say is, if you are going to wear them all day, um, I would pop a glitter glue on the lid or apply it with a wet brush um, just to be sure you keep that shine all day I mean I've worn them for eight nine hours and it's just starting to dull down but obviously if you're going to be out and you're going to have photos taken and you want it to be looking as good for you know 12 13 hours then use either a glitter glue underneath them or apply them with a wet brush so there we go that's my look it's one of my many Stetsons I have I have a lot of Stetsons it is my I have a lot of Stetsons and I also have some Trilbys they are my chosen choice of, of headwear darling far more sophisticated than a you know a trucker's cap or a baseball cap <laughs> darling no how can you look fabulous in one of those Right, all silliness aside, um, please check you're still subscribed because YouTube are still unsubscribing people and it's driving me crackers, it really is, it seems like every time I put a film up I'm losing subscribers and then I'm getting people messaging me going, I was unsubscribed from your list and didn't realise, so uh, yeah, frustrating, annoying, but what can you do? Apparently not a lot. But all the while I have you out there enjoying what I'm doing, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Whether YouTube try and dishearten me by unsubscribing you or not, I'm going to keep going. Do you know what? I was only expecting to get about 30 people watching me anyway, so the fact that I'm now just up over the 500 is outstanding. I will be filming my 500 subscriber giveaway once I'm sure I'm staying up beyond the 500 if you catch my drift on that one. Right, all that remains are for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.